What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the top 10 tax questions that I get as a reseller on my channel. I appreciate you guys. Please smash the like button, consider subscribing. So this is not a sponsored video, but I am sponsored on other videos by 1-800-ACCOUNTANT and they've offered my audience a free consultation. I'll put that in the pinned comment section below. But today, I just wanna go over the most common tax questions that I get and I'm gonna answer them the best that I can. But again, I'm not a licensed CPA. I recommend you talk to a professional, but let's get into the top 10 questions that I get as a reseller now. Okay, the most common question is, do I have to keep track of every single item line by line, meaning item number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the different shipping costs associated with it, all the different eBay costs associated with it? And the answer to that is no. I do recommend you learn at least one item and figure out what the profit loss is on a single item because that's what it looks like for your whole store. But I actually recommend that you do it categorically. So if you're gonna use a company like 1-800-ACCOUNTANT, what I would do is sign up for their bookkeeping services. And essentially, as long as you have a bank account, a credit card, and your cash receipts together, you can hand that off to a bookkeeper and they will keep track of your records for you and let you know what your proper deductions are. They can handle it for you. So I recommend you have a separate bank account, a separate debit card or credit card, and your cash receipts all together in one place. Um, that's also gonna lead us to question number two, which is, how long should I keep my tax records? I recommend up to seven years. That's from the IRS. Um, if you're going to get audited, it's usually the last three years. But personally, I keep up to seven years of records available in case that happens. So it's important to keep your records in check. And that's why it's so important to have a separate bank account, separate debit or credit card, so you can keep all those places, all those items in one place to make it easier for bookkeeping. Number three, how do I keep track of cash purchases? So a really straightforward way to do it is to get a little receipt book, write down where the garage sale was. I usually put the address, the amount that I spent and what I purchased. So a simple cash receipt, and then I match that with my ATM withdrawals. So the amount I withdraw from the bank matches the purchases that I made at a garage sale and I have a record of it. Um, this is not bulletproof. It's not the same as like an invoice from a wholesaler or a liquidator, um, but it does give you something in case of an audit as a record of where you purchased that item. So again, I'm not a CPA and that's not a bulletproof way of doing it, but that's how I do it. And definitely talk to a professional and make sure that that's a good way to keep track of cash purchases when you're going out there, thrift stores, garage sales, flea markets. A lot of those transactions, you get a better deal if you use cash, but you still need to keep track. Number four is, do I have to report tax if I didn't make very much or I didn't reach the $600 threshold? So the $600 threshold that came out in the last year or so is not a new tax law. It's just a new reporting law. So what that means is companies are now reporting to the IRS when you make $600 or more and letting the IRS know this person took in over $600 or over X amount of dollars in and you are responsible on your own to report all of the costs associated with getting that $600. So let's say you sold $1,000 worth of stuff and you paid $1,000 for that stuff. You wouldn't owe any taxes because your expenses are um, more than the amount that you actually received. So in this scenario, um, you wouldn't owe any tax, but if you earned a profit, you actually are required to report the profit, even if it's $1. So a lot of people don't do that and they don't report it unless it's reported on a 1099 from a company, but just understand you are responsible for even $1 worth of profit. So a lot of people think this is unfair because they feel like they're being taxed again and they already purchased it, but they're actually not related. If you paid some $100 for something and you sell for less than $100, you do not owe tax on that. So again, I'm not a licensed CPA, but that's how I look at it. If you're purchasing something for a profit, you're buying it below the market value and selling it for close to market value. If you pay market value for the item, most likely you will not owe tax because you're not gonna earn a profit on that sale. So it's important to understand no matter how much money you earn, if it's $1 profit or more, you are responsible for reporting your taxes. Number five, what happens when you sell something that you already own? So this is just a playoff of number four. Let's say you inherit something from grandma or you've already bought something and you're selling stuff out of your closet. In this scenario, you normally put the market value of what the item is as the cost. And remember, the IRS has different rules for gift giving. Um, you can't just say, 
I got all this stuff given to me and then you don't owe any tax. So you have to make sure that you understand that most people are thinking of this as a, on a small scale. Like I'm just selling what's in my closet. I'm just selling what's in my garage. And this channel is more for people who are building an online business and do it regularly to earn their income or their main business is earning money through reselling. It's going to be a little bit different. So make sure when you're accounting for something that you already own to ask an accountant what you should put as your cost of goods for that item because it has to be reasonable to the IRS. So this is one of the reasons why you would sign up for 1-800-ACCOUNTANT so that you could ask these types of tax, qu tax questions throughout the year to make sure you're on the right page. And I recommend doing that the first couple of years you're in business so you can really get a rock solid foundation for how taxes work because at a certain point, your number one expense will be tax. So just make sure that you're on the right page you don't want to get in trouble with the IRS. Um, and if you do, I'll give you some more tips in this video for what to do if you feel like you're behind or you haven't been keeping track so far. Number six is what happens if I haven't been keeping track? All I have is a shoebox full of receipts. I haven't kept track of any of this. I have no idea how much profit that I made. Maybe I took a loss. So if you haven't started your accounting or you've been doing this for a while, sort of under the right under the radar and not reporting anything, don't panic. Don't don't fear because all you have to do is just gather everything together the best that you can. And actually filing taxes doesn't take very long. It takes probably an hour or two to compile all that different information. The hard part is just compiling all of that in the one pile. So I recommend doing the best that you can, gather all the receipts that you do have, all the invoices that you have, all your credit card statements and bank statements in the one place. Then talk to a professional and they will help you sort it out. I promise you it does not take that long. It's way more intimidating to get started. Just like with everything else in the tax game, I would recommend just sort of narrowing it down to five second increments. What do you have to do next? Okay, I'm gonna get all of my bank account statements together. Okay, I'm gonna get all my credit card statements together. Okay, I'm gonna schedule a time with the CPA. One step at a time so you don't feel overwhelmed. A lot of people just think, oh, I need to do my taxes. And that's kind of this big overwhelming thing that's emotionally triggering. It's very, it's, it's like too big of a project. You need to take it down to bite-sized increments. And I just recommend one little thing at a time like, all your bank statements, all your receipts, all your credit card statements. And that'll help you inch towards getting your taxes done. Number seven is how do I reduce my taxes or pay no tax at all? So this one is definitely something you should leave up to your professional because they will help you find the most deductions, right? There are common deductions, which I'm going to go over in the next tip, but the point of hiring a CPA is that you pay X amount. Let's say you pay them a thousand dollars. Hopefully they save you more than a thousand dollars in deductions so that it's worth it. It's almost like getting a CPA for free. At least that's how I look at it. So make sure that you understand why you're hiring a CPA or an accountant. The idea is they can help you reduce your tax bill. And that's the whole point of getting a professional to make sure that you're doing it by the book and you're getting every single deduction you can. Number eight, what are some common tax deductions? So as a reseller, your number one most common deduction is going to be cost of goods sold. That's what you purchase for the item. There's also going to be shipping. There's also going to be platform costs. So eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Amazon, what their fees are. Those are all tax deductible. Electricity, rent, a percentage of your cell phone and utilities for your home-based business. You should consult a pro to figure out what percentage is reasonable for the IRS. So these common deductions will be deducted from your revenue that's reported from the company. So let's say you did $1,000 worth of sales on eBay eBay reports $1,000 worth of revenue to the IRS. If you do not file your taxes, the IRS assumes that all $1,000 is profit. So you will owe tax on the entire amount. But what you want to do is say, you know what? It cost me $100 for the items. Here's my receipt. It cost me $100 for shipping. Here's my receipts. A percentage of my mileage. Here's my receipts. Okay, reduce the tax bill down to, let's say, $300. So now you owe income tax on $300 instead of $1,000. Number nine, what are the odds of me being audited? So in the United States, under $25,000 a year, you have less than a 1% chance of being audited. And between 25 and $100,000 per year, you have a 1% chance of being audited. And above that, you only have a 2% chance of being audited. So I recommend, um, after that, you should probably set yourself up as an S corporation or a corporation because the chances of being audited when you're a corporation doing 100,000 to 25 million is still very unlikely because you're still a really small fish. Um, but an individual making, let's say, $2 million, that is sort of suspect because so few people do it. The average one person company in the United States only does $44,000 revenue per year. So 
that's common. The IRS is going to see $44,000 and less. That's like more than 90% of entrepreneurs are in that bucket. Once you start making a little bit more, it makes sense to get some tax protection. On this channel, we always talk about doing at least five or 10 items a day. And if you do that, you're going to be above the 44,000 threshold in revenue. You're going to be more like in the 100 to 250,000 in revenue. And I recommend definitely some tax help. Um, it's worth a thousand dollars to really understand how much money you owe the IRS. And again, understand that this, what you're doing right now, becoming an entrepreneur is insanely difficult. And you don't have to do everything on your own. Get some professional help, get people that are around you that are like-minded and it's really gonna help you understand the numbers. So number 10 is my favorite question, which is why should I pay tax at all? Now, the reason you should pay tax, in my opinion, is so that you can get loans to buy real estate. That's really the main reason. So if you never pay tax, one, it's very suspicious, and the IRS will audit you because small businesses are designed to make profit, and if you do it for too long, and you're in the hobby classification, they're gonna wonder what's going on. So you wanna earn a profit, and you wanna earn a profit enough to take out a loan to buy real estate. I'm a big fan of doing that because Real estate is a more passive type of income. So for me personally, I just bought a house on my eBay income. I had to report two years of tax returns in order to qualify for a loan. So I recommend not like paying as much tax as possible. I know that sounds crazy, but it allows you to report a higher income and it allows you to leverage more when purchasing a home. So even in California, you can run an eBay business large enough to get enough money to purchase a home just on eBay income. But remember, you're probably gonna need um, at least two to six months of bank statements and two tax returns. So I recommend paying as much tax as possible and leveraging that to do something a little bit more passive. Running an eBay business is a grind because you've got to do it every single day. You have to ship every day. So I recommend you get into a more passive income like real estate or investments and you need to show a history of actually turning a profit. Um, so I appreciate you guys again. Check out one of the sponsors on my channel, 1-800-ACCOUNTANT. I've tagged their link in the, the top comment on this video for you guys to check out. And they've been very generous in sponsoring my videos in the past. This one is not sponsored by them, but I wanted to shout them out and give you guys what I recommend, which is at least get the, the level that's $125 a month. That is billed annually, but if you get that level, you can ask tax questions year round, and that's really the best bang per buck. If you earn you know, over 500,000 a year, definitely go for the enterprise model. That's what I would select for my business because there's a little bit more help, a little more one-on-one -on -one, and some more bookkeeping help, which is important when you're doing that many transactions. Um, so I appreciate you guys make progress daily.